All right. So in this case, I need us to consider another typical exam question as we are to consider our transducers. Uh, we talked of these diagrams, the presentation that we had before on our introduction. So you are given on 2.1, the following incomplete data is retrieved from a simulator exercise on transducer applications. This is the information or the data that you're given. The RTD detector voltage. Uh, remember, that's our VD. We are given R1, R2 is the unknown value, R3, 100. Then we are also given the thermometer resistance at 100 degrees Celsius and the supply voltage, which is also given our VS. So remember, this is part of your bridge uh, when you're considering the bridge network. When Remember when I talked about when the op amp is used to amplify the output signal of a detector bridge. Remember that part of your detector bridge where you're given the resistor R1, uh, then you put another resistor R2, uh, having resistor R3, uh, then also we're going to have the part of our thermometer, which is the part of the thermocouple presentation, uh, where you are having, so this is your R1, your R2, your R3, uh, your R4, which is representing uh, this part, this one is just same as our R4, that is our thermometer resistance. Remember, the diagram, guys, this being taken to the supply, whatever that you're going to have there, then the VD across here. So they are saying from that presentation uh, where we have these as standard resistors, R1, R2, and R3, remember those are your standard resistors. The question is proved by calculations that the bridge uses standard resistors. It uses standard because they are the same, like 100, one, they are supposed to be the same. So they are saying prove that, show by calculation that it used that standard uh, resistors. So in our calculation, they just wanted to find the value of R2. Uh, and according to these values, R1 and R3, you can see they are the same. So we are supposed to have the same uh, approximated value there. Remember, we talked about the same question like that, which is standard resistors, R1, R2, R3 being the same. So this one, guys, it was just on the detector bridge only. It has nothing to do with the amplification that will happen then. No, 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 no. Okay, remember your formula. How do you calculate? That is the question now. How were you calculating the VD, which is our detector voltage? Remember, our VD was calculated uh, from the formula VS into uh, R1 over the sum of these two R1 plus R2 minus, uh, we're using R3 over the sum, which is R3 plus R4. But R4, like I said, it represents our RTH. That is our R4. And you need to calculate the value of what? The value of R2. They are saying determine R2 from there. All right, let's try and make this the subject because we need to calculate that. And when they say calculate, guys, show the stages. They are saying, Make the subject, find that as the subject first, then substitute your values. So what can we do? Let's divide by VS both side because this is outside of the bracket. We can simply uh, divide by that so that it can cancel. So you'll be left with the VD over VS is equal to your left with this part inside. Uh, but there's a one. So one multiplies this bracket. So it's going to be R1 over the sum of R1 plus R2 minus R3 over the sum of R3 plus RTH like that. This is where we are. And we can see that this part of our bracket, I mean, this part of the fraction has no effect to R2. It, it does not contain R2. So you can take it to the other side of our equation so that it can be a positive there. So it'll be VD over VS plus uh, R3 over the sum of these R3 uh, plus RTH like that. This is what we have. And this is equal to what? You're left on this side, this is R1 over the sum R1 plus R2. Okay, as we can see from this side that uh, R2 is in the denominator. Let's say we have got something like this, one over X is equal to two over three, and you want to calculate X, how do you find X? You interchange this one. So it will be X over one is equal to also interchange this one. So it will be three over two. Using that idea because R2 is in the denominator, 
we have to interchange. But in order for us to interchange here, we must have a single fraction. We must have a single fraction. So in order for us to have a single fraction, remember this number that we are seeing. I mean, this whole expression that we are as it is like this, to be a fraction, we can have it as a single number and as a fraction, we just have to put a bracket like this and write it as over one like this, so that it's a fraction. As we have a fraction here, we also have a fraction here. So that if we interchange this, like I was explaining here, the moment we interchange to say, this is now written on top. The moment we interchange, you're also interchanging so that at least R2 is in the numerator, not that it, it will be difficult there to work with that because even if you tried to cross, more, let's say you wanted to cross multiply, it was going to be like this. Maybe someone say, what if we cross multiply? It was going to be like this. It was going to be R1 plus R2 into VD over VS plus this R whatever that you have there. So as you can see, it was going to complicate, which, which is fine. We can have it that, that way. If you want it, it was going to be R3 uh, over R3 plus RTH like this. You have cross multiplied, and this is equal to what? And this is equal to, uh, because it was going to cross multiply, we have a bracket, then one times it was going to be R1 like that. Then from there, what you do? You have to divide now by this. You see now, you have to divide now by the bracket VD over VS plus R3 over R3 plus RTH. You have to divide it this side. So this is what we're just going to do it. We're just going to remain here with uh, R1 plus R3. We have divided, so this is a one, remember. So it's just a one because we have divided by this. So there's no need for bracket here. So it will be equal to R1 over, remember the purpose of dividing. Uh, it was to remove the bracket, but we're going to have it this side. So it'll be R1 over this bracket of VD over VS uh, plus R3 over R3 plus RTH like that. So this is how you're going to have it. If you are using this concept, then from there, uh, this is R1 plus R2 here, R2, R2 there. This is R1 plus R2. Okay, that's an R2 there. And this is the one that you need R2. So you can simply make this one the subject by taking R1 to the other side so that it will be a negative there. So you're going to find out that your equation was going to remain with R2. Then you take the R1 there, it becomes a negative. So it means you're going to have a repetition of this. You're going to have a repetition of this as it is a VD over VS plus uh, R3 over R3 plus RTH like this. Then you remember we've taken the R1 that side. So it will be minus R1 like this. That is what it means. We have R2 as the subject, which was going to be the same thing if you had to work it this way of interchanging. If you are to use this concept, you're just gonna interchange. So it will be one over there on top. So it will be one of the moment interchange, like I was explaining VD over VS, uh, plus R3 over R3 plus what? RTH like this is equal to, you interchange that one. So it will be R1 plus R2 over R1. Since this is in the numerator, now it is easier for us to remove the R1 that is affecting. How do you remove this? We can simply multiply uh, by R1 because it's in the denominator. So multiply by R1, multiply by R1 this side. So this will cancel. You are left with R1 plus R2. So definitely the R1 that you have multiplied, guys, is going to multiply here. So it will be R1 there because you have multiplied. So meaning to say in order for you to make this R2 the subject, what are you going to do? You're going to take this R1 this side. So it was going to be this part of the bracket as it is R1 over VD over VS plus uh, R3 over R3 plus RTH like this. Then you take this R1 to this side. So it will be a negative R1 like that, which, which is equal to what? which is equal to R2. As we can see, we have the same uh, manipulation thereafter. We have the same manipulation thereafter. So using any formula that you want from there, we can calculate the value of R2. So R2 is going to be equal to what? Remember R1, we have these values just going to substitute. Your R1 was 100. Uh, your R3 
this you subject all these values guys so make sure that you know your values because i'm just going to take uh those values and substitute there so remember our other one we are substituting uh this is it remember our other one was 100 ohms over vd which was 404 millivolts so that's times 10 to the exponent of minus 3 that's the milli uh volts everything over vs our supply remember it was given as 5 volts uh then we're gonna have plus just gonna put a bracket there r3 remember r3 was same as r1 which was 100 r3 was 100 plus rth we were given there as 185 uh 138.5 then we subtract r1 remember r1 is that 100 so whatever that we have from here you must subtract one whatever that you're gonna get here subtract 100 on your answer so you're going to get something like 99,965, something like that, which is actually approximating to 100. If you round off to the nearest one number, it's going to be 100 ohm. So as we can see, it is giving us the same consideration as R1, R2. Remember R1, I mean, as R1 and R3, 100 ohms. Same consideration that we had. R1 was what? 100 ohms. R3 was 100 ohms. So just be careful, guys, your calculations. A change of subject, N6, guys, is all about your change of subject. So revisit uh, your mathematics N3, those change of subject that you used to do, your mathematics N4, that's where you had those manipulation of the subject or formula. Uh, so you can consider that. Then on six on 2.2, you're given to state the major difference between active transducers and passive transducers the major difference what is it that you have to consider when working with the active uh transducers remember active transducers those are the ones that do not need any external power so there is no external no external uh power there they do not depend or require any external source of power to produce an output, e.g. thermocouples, moving coil generators. They do not depend or require an external source of power to produce an output. Okay? Then if you consider the passive uh, transducers, if you consider uh the passive transducers these ones they are externally powered they are externally powered what does it mean it means they are dependent on an external source they need an external source of power to produce an output they depend on an external source of power to produce an output. E.g., you can talk of the potentiometers. Uh, that is, we can consider uh, the part of our potentiometers, uh, the part of our strain gauges. They need uh, an external uh, source of power in order for them to be active in any part that you're going to work with, as the active ones. They do not need that. There is no external power. Like I said, you can consider examples such as thermocouples. Uh, they can be used. Uh, those moving coil generators. A lot of examples. They are moving uh, coil uh, generators. They can be used there, active. So that is our question there. So let's do revise as much questions as we can. Uh, preparing ourselves for the exams which are ahead of time you need your basics and just try to do as much question papers to see how do they ask those questions till we meet again